O oh Lord, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead us. Let them bring us to the mountain of thy holiness and to thy dwelling place. For your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Bow down thine ear, O Lord, and hear us. For you, O Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to our prayer and attend to the voice of our supplications. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Search me, O God, and know my heart. And see if there be any wicked way in me. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so upon the earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord, forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. Amen. Glory and might be unto him forever and ever. Amen. Who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Amen. Now we'll turn to our handouts and find our recitation, which we'll do as a responsive reading. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. And to sing praises to your name, O Most High. To declare thy mercy in the morning. And your faithfulness in the night. For by your work, O Lord, you have made me glad. We will sing for joy of the works of thy hands. O Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. A stupid man does not know, nor does a senseless man understand this. But you, Lord, My horn you have exalted like that of a unicorn. I have been anointed with fresh oil. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like the cedar in the heaven. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. To declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Please be seated. <clears throat> Reading from Genesis portion of chapter 8. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. From Exodus, portion of chapter 23. Three times you shall keep a feast to me in the year. You shall keep the feast of unleavened bread. You shall eat unleavened bread seven days, as I commanded you at the time appointed in the month of Abib, for in it you came out of Egypt. None shall appear before me empty. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of your labors, which you have sown in the field and the feast of ingathering 
at the end of the year when you have gathered in the fruit of your labors from the field. Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he has inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call upon him as long as I live. The pains of death surrounded me and the pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of Jehovah. O Lord, I implore you, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. I was brought low and he saved me. Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, therefore I spoke. I am greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Precious is the sight of the Lord, in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is from Matthew 10, Matthew 9. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. From the book of Revelation, Chapter 14, then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, write, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. And then I looked and behold a white cloud and on the cloud sat one like the son of man, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand, a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, thrust in your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Amen.
Uh, third lessons are from Arcana Celestia. Ninety two ninety four Arcana Celestia and the feast of the harvest of the first fruits of your labors, which you have sown in the field means worship of the Lord and thanksgiving on account of the implanting of truth in that good. This is clear from the meaning of the, the feast as worship of the Lord and thanksgiving from the meaning of the harvest as truth when it becomes fruitful, thus its implantation in good. From the meaning of the first fruits or the beginnings of labors, as the things which come at the end of instruction and at the start of life. And from the meaning of sowing as giving instruction, and from the meaning of the field as the church in respect to good. And so the church is good. From these meanings, it is evident that the feast of the harvest of the first fruits of labors, which you have sown in the field, means worship of the Lord and thanksgiving because truth has been planted in good. Three, the three feasts were established on account of people's deliverance from damnation, thus on account of their regeneration since it is through regeneration that a person is delivered from hell and brought to heaven. On this account, the first feast, which was called the Feast of Unleavened Bread, means purification from falsities. The second feast, therefore, means the planting of truth in good. The third feast, the implantation of good. Planting of truth. Planning of good. References made, this is Arcana as well, 10669. References made very many times in the word to earth or land, ground, field, seed time, harvest, standing grain, threshing floor, grain, wheat, and barley. And in those places, they mean the kinds of things that are involved in the establishment of the church and that are involved in the regeneration of a person who is in the church. Thus, the kinds of things that are connected with the truth of faith and the good of love, which constitute the church. From 106.70, and you shall keep the feast of weeks of the first fruits of the wheat of harvest means worship of the Lord and thanksgiving on accounting on account of the implanting of truth in good. And 10671, the feast of ingathering at the end of the year means the worship of a thankful mind on account of the implanting of good after that. And so on account of regeneration and complete deliverance, complete deliverance from damnation. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. A sermon from about four years ago, revised. It's called, You Give Them Their Food in Due Season. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. From Psalm 116. It's November and our Thanksgiving celebration happens later this month. It's a wonderful thing that our whole nation 
is able to have a holiday about giving thanks, rooted in the season of the harvest. There are many different cultures and nations where we find a day set aside to give thanks for a plentiful harvest. In our country, this has become a national holiday and we all get to celebrate it our own specific way according to our own specific beliefs. The first Canadian Thanksgiving is believed to have been held in 1578. So it is older than the celebration in, in the United States which started in the 1600s. The Kadazan festival in Malaysia celebrates rice, according to their saying that without rice, there is no life. Hoomo or Homowo is the festival of yams in Ghana and is dedicated to the harvest and families are brought together thrilled and hopeful and slightly competitive to be the group with the largest crop. Erntedankfest is the Thanksgiving day of Germany and it's a religiously dominated celebration centered on giving thanks for the year's harvest and grain and so on for China, Korea, India, and several other nations. The Vietnam, Vietnamese equivalent to American Thanksgiving is known as the Children's Festival and is considered a way for parents to make amends with their children who may have felt neglected during the work of the harvest. In ancient Israel, there was a harvest festival called the Feast of Ingathering, which of course we read about in Exodus. This describes a very old celebration of the gathering in of crops, requiring a pilgrimage to the sanctuary of God to make an offering. This feast took on elements of the wilderness wanderings of the Exodus when their ancestors lived in tents and was also called the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Booths or Sukkot. In a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, the book of Leviticus tells us, the Israelites would construct huts or booths, shelters, and live in them for seven days. Today, it is a Jewish custom to celebrate the Sukkot as a remembrance of the exodus from Egypt and a, as a Thanksgiving festival. There is a tradition of constructing small tents or booths or canopies in the home, on the deck or in the backyard and eat their main meals in them during the seven day celebration. Prayers, blessings, rituals of good food and good food enhance the festivities, focusing on gratitude to God for deliverance, protection, and bounty. From ancient times to present day, we see a worldwide theme of thanks in a spirit of giving back. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? What shall I give back? What is given back can be understood as first fruits. Reading from the Apocalypse Revealed. In the Israelitish church, it was commanded that the first fruits of the produce of the fields, of all grain, oil, the fruits of a tree, also of wool, should be given to Jehovah as holy. Also, that they should celebrate the feast of the first fruits of harvest and of bread. The reason was because the first fruits used to signify that which is firstborn and afterward grows as a child into an adult and as a shoot into a tree. Consequently, they used to signify everything following until it was made complete. For everything following exists in the first, as the adult in the child and the tree in the shoot. The first comes into existence before the things following. Similarly, in heaven and in the church, 
Therefore, the first fruits were holy to the Lord, and the feast of first fruits was celebrated. In our spiritual life, what does this mean? What are the first fruits that come from us? It is useful each year to think about our own fruits. Everybody produces fruit. Think about fruit as uses, service to the neighbor, good things that you do, understanding the Lord's word and applying that doctrine to life. This is being fruitful, yielding something from affection and understanding of truth to action in service to others. If we just understand and don't do anything with our understanding, then that understanding takes no form. If we just do good without any thought from understanding, then it has no quality that tells us the goodness is from the Lord. We begin to attribute all good things to ourselves if good is not balanced with truth. All good is from the Lord. Do we do good? We do. That's the whole purpose of our life, to do good to others with the acknowledgement that it is from the Lord out of the truths of his word. There's a wonderful teaching in the work, The True Christian Religion, which says this, a person is not born for himself, but for the sake of others. That is, the person is not born to live for himself alone, but for others. Otherwise, there would be no such thing as social community in which any goodness could exist. TCR 406. It is a common saying that every person is neighbor to himself. But the doctrine of charity teaches how this is to be understood. The Lord wants us to love others as ourselves, as we know from the second great commandment. The Lord doesn't teach us to not love ourselves or to despise or hate ourselves. Some people think that the complete denial of self is what is desired, and so they practice self-deprecation. We know of practices throughout world history of self-flagellation and deprivation, done as a holy act. This is not what is desired of the Lord. We are to love ourselves or we can't love others. You get up in the morning and you have to take care of yourself so that you can serve others. And you could say, well, which is first, serving yourself or serving others? And you could say, well, in a sense, serving yourself, taking care of yourself and your own, your family is first. But really, that is first in time. You do have to take care of things. You have to be a healthy person. Your family needs to survive. You need to have gainful employment and be able to survive in the world. That's all true. And it seems to come first. But what is first in end or purpose is others. And that is something that we can focus on when we think about being grateful to the Lord. Other people. We are not born for ourselves alone. In our lives, we want to love. We know that love is about giving to others. We also know that it is about receiving. We know we are loved when someone does something for us, taking care of us in our time of need. We gratefully receive it because it is allowing them to have the happiness of giving love. And so we need to learn to receive love knowing full well that it's still not just for us. It is for their sake. On the receiving end, we can say, this love that I'm receiving is for this friend's sake, 
so that this friend can experience loving. Yet, some people find it difficult to receive love. Oh, no, no, don't give me anything, don't thank me. People can actually reject other people's gestures of kindness and goodness toward them. But the Lord wants them to be happy in the doing of that good thing for another. We're the other. We need to be good receivers of love as well as good givers of love, knowing that it's really all about the Lord being experienced in a state of mutual love. That's what heavenly community is. People loving each other and receiving love from each other and attributing, it, attributing all of it to the Lord. First fruits, that is the concept of attributing goodness to the Lord. And so we read in the Apocalypse Revealed, the first fruits of God and the Lamb as mentioned in the book of Revelation, means the institution of the Christian heaven, acknowledging the one God in whom is the Trinity, the Lord being that God. By first fruits is understood what is born first and also what is first gathered. Thus, an initiation, a starting, a beginning. Also, by the harvest, are symbolized all those things that spiritually nourish a person, which have reference to truths of doctrine and goodness of life. Apocalypse Revealed 623. Continuing that passage, first fruits signify acknowledging that all things are from the Lord, acknowledging, giving of the first fruits. And listen to this, finishing the passage from Apocalypse Revealed. First fruits signify that which is first born and afterward grows as a child into an adult and a shoot into a tree, as we read in our lesson. Consequently, they are used to signify everything following until it was made complete, for everything that follows exists in the first, as the adult in the child and the tree in the shoot. And because the first comes into existence before the following things do, in like manner is heaven and the church. Therefore, the first fruits were holy to the Lord. Feasts of the first fruits were celebrated. First fruits mean also those who have given themselves to the Lord and are adopted by him. When we read in the word about first fruits, and about what that means, we notice the concept of firstborn as well. And we see that this has a similar meaning. First fruits have to do with the vegetable kingdom, plants, fruits, vegetables, crops. Firstborn has to do with the animal kingdom and human beings. You really don't distinguish in a family that one is better than another. But the concept of that firstness, concept of something that is first and given back to the Lord is a spiritual concept of acknowledging that all good things are from the Lord first or primarily. We acknowledge that all truth is from the Lord, everything that leads to intelligence and wisdom. And these are the crops or first fruits. And we acknowledge that all good is from the Lord, everything that leads to the goodness of life and goodwill and kindness toward others. And these are represented by firstborn, living things. Truth and goodness, both represented in first things, first fruits, firstborn. Throughout all of human history, People have celebrated abundance in gatherings of gratitude toward God. And for all of the knowledge that we have about growing things, plants and seeds, none of us knows how to create the seed in the first place. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. Amen.
Please rise. And now to the one only God, Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance and feed them and lift them up forever. Amen. Be gracious unto me, O God, according to thy mercy, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy generous spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.